in a very, well, I won't say cynical, but I'm, I'm, it, it's cynical. <laughs> I, I've, I've been of the general impression that when someone uses floating point for an algorithm, they don't understand mm -hmm. their algorithm. Right? Mm. Floating point is the crutch for not knowing what's going on in your data. Right? If you mm. know what you're if you really understand what your data looks like and how you're manipulating it at each stage, for most applications, not all, but for most applications, there is a pure integer solution or at worst an integer solution with an invisible binary point somewhere, right? Right, breaking it into right. the integer part and the fractional part of a of a binary number. Right. right. And I hope you noticed uh I was very explicit that it's not the decimal point. I I, I, right, I, right. I, I get angry <laughs> when people refer to uh that as a decimal point when they're looking at binary or octal or hex data. Um the right. term that and th by the way, th all of this, this comes from when I worked at AMD where I was designing these types of chips, uh, that is the bit slice products and the RISC CPUs. Um, I resolved right. that by giving it a, my, my generic name is the radix point. So rather than the decimal okay. yep. point, uh, for whatever radix you're working, whether it's decimal, hex, octal or binary, that, that dot is the uh, radix point. And and then I and then right, and then right. I get less frustrated and angry. Okay. Right. Well, to encourage you to to continue listening to the podcast after after this episode, I'll try to uh, ensure that that other guests as well adhere to to uh, to that practice. <laughs>